everybody, it's Chris and I'm back to do a little bit of an experiment with you. So I've had a lot of questions on what is needed to get started for pouring. And one of the things that I kind of feel is kind of important to know is how, you know, how much do you want to invest in this art? Um, because there's different pouring mediums that you can use and depending on what you want to achieve might make a difference as to what you would choose to start with to pour. So today we're going to do an experiment and we're going to do three different canvases. These are all eight by eight canvases. All of my paints have been mixed and I've chosen three different pouring mediums or additives to my paint um, for today's experiment. And I just kind of feel like this might be a good place for people to be like, oh, I really want my canvases to, you know, have a lot of cells or I really like the looks of just the flow trawl. So I thought maybe this might be a good experiment and kind of go hand in hand with someone who's beginning and kind of help them decide like which form of pouring medium they would want to use. So I'm using three different colors of paint today. I have purposefully chosen three different brands. I've also chosen colors that I know are not known for their effects on their own. I have not included white in this. Um, generally, I'll use my Flow Acrylic white paint to create cells. So I've left the white out of it and I've kind of chosen colors that I know don't necessarily have reactions on their own just because of the properties that are in the paint colors. So today I'm using the Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. Um, as you know, this is one of my favorite colors. I'm also using the Master's Touch Pink, which to me is kind of like a salmon pink. It's a really pretty color. This one is from Hobby Lobby. This one is from Michaels. And then I'm also using, oh, that could have been really bad. Um, I'm also using Liquitex Basics uh, Medium Magenta. And this one can be purchased anywhere, really. So I chose three different brands of paint um, just so that we can kind of see like what happens with different brands as well. Um, I have mixed my first set of paints just with Floetrol. I've started with a half an ounce of paint in all of my uh, cups and all of my different pouring mediums. So this is a half ounce of um, paint and it has two and a quarter ounces of Floetrol. This is still really super thick in my opinion. Um, I have added probably a half an ounce of water along with two, let's see, I added one and three quarters ounces of my pouring medium to all of my half ounce paints. But my flow trial for some reason this time was super, super thick. So um, I did add some water to these because I felt like they were still really thick even after I added just the flow trial in. I generally cut my paints. Um, I use one part paint and two to three parts of pouring medium to um, get the consistency that I want. Today I've added just a little bit more actually just because it seems like it's just thicker today. This is my pouring medium recipe. Um, so this one is a little bit thinner than what the flow trawl is. Um, the, my pouring medium recipe is four cups of flow trawl and I do strain my flow trawl. Make sure you strain your flow trawl because you will get flow trawl, what we call flow trawl boogers which is gross. Um, but my pouring medium recipe is four cups of Floetrol, one cup of Elmer's glue all, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium, and a quarter cup of water. So that's what these paints are mixed with. My third set of paint is actually Elmer's glue all and water. And I've heard a lot of people use this pouring medium. Um, and it's much thinner than the other ones. And this honestly is probably more the consistency We'll see if I can get this up here. This is more the consistency of what my paints are when I mix my pouring medium. So um, the Elmer's Glue All is, what I mixed up was two thirds cup of Elmer's Glue All and a third cup of filtered water. And that's what these paints are mixed with. So we're working on eight by eight canvases. I have five ounce cups. I have lightly sprayed those with WD-40 silicone and then I wipe them out with a paper towel. So I think today we're just gonna do a dirty cup pour. So I'm just gonna pour my paints in, in the same order in all three cups so that we hopefully get the same effect on all three canvases.
Okay, so there's our cups. Um, I can already see some reaction in this one. Let's see if I can get this up here so you can see it. I don't know if you can see the little cells that are kind of going around on the edges of the paint. This is the glue all. I don't really see a whole lot going on in there. Let me get it back so you can actually see it. And then this is just the Floetrol. And there's nothing going on in that cup. So I kind of think I'm just going to, I think I'm actually going to flip these rather than do a dirty pour. So let's just flip them. And I can tell you there's already way too much paint for these canvases. So we will flip these and then whatever's left over on the mat, we'll probably, I'll probably dip some coasters in later just so that I don't waste it. And I'm just going to kind of let these sit here for a second. You can see that the paint's releasing from the cups and that's just because I had that silicone in there. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off. Way too much paint. And I'm just going to tilt this down a little bit. I do have paint left in my cup, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there just so that I can use it for something else. There's a lot of paint in there, so rather than waste it onto the plastic. And you can see we've got some cells going on. Um, so it, there is a reaction even just with Floetrol, which is how I started pouring. When I first started pouring, all I knew was Floetrol. So all I did was Floetrol. I didn't have, you know, pouring mediums or anything else. It was, that's just how I learned myself. Okay, this is the pouring medium recipe. And again, I have a lot of paint in here. And I'm going to pour just a little bit down here because I feel like there might not be enough on the... And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. You can see there's a lot more cells that are initially popping up in this one too. Kind of interesting colors. All right, and then let's see what the glue all over looks like. I'm just going to tilt this down so that my paint doesn't run off. So that's interesting because right now you can't even see that coral color. It's completely lost. And once again, I still have paint left in here, so I'll just set this back here and then we'll do something different with it. And I am going to go ahead and torch these um, because sometimes when you torch, you'll get some other reactions going on. And it also pops the air bubbles. Sometimes the air bubbles will help you to create cells as well. This is that glue. There's that lighter pink color popping through now that we popped bubbles. And I imagine once we start to stretch this one, it probably will pop up with some more stuff. Hopefully, anyway. All right. That's very interesting, I have to say. There's definitely a lot more cells within uh, the pouring medium one. And then this one, there's a lot of stuff going on, but um, it seems like these paints kind of stayed separated more. So I'll see what happens when we tilt it. I'm just gonna kind of hold my hand up here on the corner to kind of catch some of the paint from going over the side.
Okay, so this is the Floetrol. This is the pouring medium, and this is just the glue all in water. I have to say I'm not impressed at all with the glue all in water. And I wonder if it's just because there's no silicone in the paint. Maybe that's the other part that you need in order to get reaction out of the paint is to put silicone in there. But I don't have any silicone mixed in any of my paints. And you can see that the Floetrol and the pouring medium, we definitely got a lot of reaction and kind of some fun like webbing and different effects out of the paint. Whereas this one is doing kind of some funky stuff here in the middle, but I don't feel like we really got any cells like we did here. I am gonna to torch them one more time just to make sure that that doesn't create some extra stuff for us. And I can tell that I've got air bubbles in here, so that'll pop the air bubbles as well. These paints were just mixed, so sometimes when you mix your paints um, and use them right away, you'll have air bubbles. Okay, so there are the three canvases. I am going to take my camera down so that I can show you close-ups of each one. Okay, so this is the one that has just Floetrol and paint. And I'm going to come in and kind of get some close-up for you. Sorry, I got a little reflection on the window. And there's that pretty metallic color. And then this is my pouring medium recipe. On this one, I feel like the metallic cobalt kind of got a little bit lost. It's not super prevalent. Down here in the corner though, you can see how I've got cells within cells. So the color is kind of like enveloped into other colors. And then this is the glue all. So this is just the glue all in the water. Not super duper exciting, I don't think. And the metallic totally got lost in this one. Um, it's just kind of nowhere to be found. And I'm wondering if it's because uh, sometimes when the metallics are added to pores, if it's thinner, sometimes it gets lost. And I feel like the metallic was a little bit thinner on this one when I went to pour it in the cup. Okay, so glue all in water. This is the pouring medium recipe. And then this is just straight Floetrol. So if you have any questions, let me show you all three of them together again. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.